Hi, so welcome to part two on the hydro build. In part one, we got the transmission partially mounted, so it's up here so that we can play with it. In part two, we're going to be mounting the live axle in the rear. What I've done to start with is I've cut out these pieces here and I've drilled holes all the way through. That way, my pillow blocks can mount up. We're actually going to gain about an inch and a half or so of lift because the live axle is actually going to be running down in this area which is about an inch and a half lower than the original axle was. So we're going to gain about an inch and a half and we're going to set it all the way back here and we should be able to bolt the pillow blocks in, line the gears up and go from there. Um, what I'm going to be doing now is welding in reinforcements from here to the frame in order to make this solid because as you can see right now it moves. Hi right, guys, well as you know I usually try and limit the amount that I walk around with a camera but I want to do a walk around right now and show you guys exactly what's going on with this thing and the progress we made today. Unfortunately, there's really not too much how-to to this video because it's just kind of tedious and figure it out as you go. So, here we go. Um, the gears, I've tack welded four points around so that they're on their hubs. So as you can see, the large gear is on the transaxle. Just so that everybody's happy now and not screaming at me. And the little gear is on the live axle and we'll be figuring out the alignment in the chain soon. As you can see, I welded the plate across here and I welded it across the back side and then I came forward and I welded this piece directly to the side of the chassis and to the top down here. And as you can see, it doesn't move at all. And I did the same thing on the other side and gears are also welded up on this side ready to start figuring out chain the other thing that I'm going to need to figure out and let me grab a light is over on this side if you look this right here is your actuator and it normally would have been tied in with this piece here which would go up and down here I'll show you which normally would be reverse, full forward. Reverse, full forward. Well the problem is, is that actuates this piece here, which goes up and down. Well that puts this in the way of this piece. But what I discovered was that this actually has a side plate on it and that the lever that's actually actuated is over here. Let's see if I can get some light. If you can see those two nuts coming out, there's two nuts right here, one and then two. And those attach to a lever coming out of the top of the transmission. Right there, you can see them going through. So what I'm going to have to do is take these two out and then drill a plate with a pivot point in order to connect with this. And I may have to move this so that it actuates kind of in this direction instead of up and down. Oh, and while we're here, we did figure out one other side note. I am going to have to cut the end of the axle shaft off on the transmission. And the reason for that is not because of this jutting out. It actually wouldn't be that far out past the regular footboards. I mean, in comparison, there's your gas pedal, I mean brake and clutch, and there's that. So it really isn't out that far. The reason this has to be cut off is actually because when the tire is on this axle, it's going to hit this one. So I'm going to have to figure out bringing it out far enough and then being able to clear the tire in the front. boys point of no return right here so apparently 
apparently the learning experience to this is you can't cut that off with a bandsaw. It just will not do it. Even with a good Makita blade. So I guess we're going to take a grinder to it. There we go, no turning back now. So there we go, the axles are cut off and the tires are put on with about an inch and a half of axle on either side. And I'm gonna have to do something about the amount of axle coming out. I think I may end up putting another set of pillow blocks in because that's just way too much of a distance. It'll be okay for trying it out, but eventually I'll need something in order to take up the slack of all of that axle sticking out. Because there's at least six inches before it hits into the rim. So there we are. On the next video, hopefully we will have the chain installed should be able to have the shift linkage done and if everything goes right quick test run